Hi, I'm Black Dragon, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Black Dragon Biker TV. And as always, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in from wherever it is in the world that you happen to be. And we are coming to you live uh, from Johns Creek, Georgia. And um, this is kind of a, an emergency kind of video since I got an emergency kind of uh email just a few minutes ago uh, and the guy said what is the protocol or the procedure for borrowing money from your motorcycle club in an emergency as in there's no time for the uh, next meeting so he asked me uh, do I have a video on that and no, I don't have a video on that. But uh, since I'm sitting here in a doctor's office and my doctor just got called to the emergency room, and I could be here forever. Uh, I thought I'd take time to make this video and to say a prayer for whatever pool, poor person is uh, over there up, up off in the um, emergency room. Now that sucks. Uh, but uh, I'm just here for a uh, general checkup. Uh, my blood pressure is like amazing. It's like a, uh, 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 I think it was like 122 over 78 or something like that. Just um, pretty damn amazing. I mean, we have been working on this blood pressure now for several months. And... Um, my uh, my nurse practitioner over here at Johns Emory at Johns Creek, one of the finest hospitals, um, got me just just really just tum, 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 tum on this blood pressure thing, which uh, is important, especially for African American men who die at a just a, a outrageous number of us die at an early age due to high blood pressure. So. Anyway, um, so many, many motorcycle clubs have procedures in place for how to get money. And a long time ago, when I first became uh, national president of my motorcycle club, I put in a lot of procedures in place because uh, in our history, we had a lot of motorcycle clubs, I mean, a lot of members who had fallen out with, with each other over uh, money. So we, uh, when I became national president, one of the things I wanted to do was alleviate, get rid of, change this, 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 this thing where guys would fall out over, over money. And uh, I came up with some pretty uh, interesting rules for borrowing money. For instance, uh, if you wanted to borrow money from a club member, you had to bring that into the club at a club meeting and... Uh, it had to be signed for this, that, and the other. You had to have a promissory note to pay. And the reason I did that is uh, because a lot of times, you know, a guy might loan a guy $20 or 50 or 100 whatever the case may be, $2,000, whatever. And they just have this thing between the two of them, and then they want to make that a club issue. Uh, one guy wants to make that a club issue. And we had no idea that uh, you were borrowing the money and, now you want us to go get the money. So uh, if you're going to make it a club issue, then you're going to bring it into the club, into the treasurer, and to, uh, uh, it's going to be entered into the me meetings, minutes, and um, uh, we we'll have a, a documented way to track that. If not, you just loaned your brother some money and you didn't get back, and I don't want to hear about it in the club because you didn't follow the club procedures and you can go to hell. So that's how that went. Um, but in your bylaws, there should be a way that you can have an emergency meeting. We call them a quorum, uh, an emergency meeting or emergency quorum. Uh, it doesn't have to be every member. It can be a, a percentage, 66%, two thirds, whatever number you have, uh, members that can vote for a quorum. So if you need money in an emergency, um, and your club, uh, doesn't have a, 
a way to make emergency money happen, then maybe it might be something that you can think about. Uh, yes, I'm good, everybody. I'm just uh, sitting here waiting on the doctor. This is a normal checkup. Uh, I know y'all see that thing. Uh, it's got a really cool name, spagometer or something like that. But no, that I'm I'm cool. So um, the the way that um, that uh, uh, you can do it is um, you can set up emergency kinds of um, funds. So that the president will have at his discretion an amount of money that he can loan out to a member uh, for emergencies. And that amount of money just depends on what your bank account looks like. So um, maybe you want to dedicate 10% or 5% or $1,500 or $30. Uh, but there could be a, an amount of money that the president could let go of on his discretion without having a, meet, a, a, a meeting. And uh, you can also put the classes of things like if somebody's arrested, we're going to uh, let $1,500 be the max. If somebody's arrested doing something for the club, maybe it's $2,500. But, but if somebody's arrested beating their wife, then we're not helping at all. You know, there could be levels of this thing. Um, and so that a member doesn't have to be in a situation where they're having an emergency and they don't know how to uh, to, to get money uh, in case of emergency. And that's, that's what this letter was to me. Uh, how do I get funds in an emergency? Can't wait until the next meeting. And what is the proper procedure or protocol for that? So the proper procedure or protocol is that protocol that your club sets up for that. So things you might want to think about, uh, because people die, they get hurt, they go to jail, they uh, can't pay their rent, all kinds of things happen, and you have to decide how much of the club's funds you want to dedicate and what kind of cutoff you're going to put people on. Um, you know, you asked the last four months in a row, bro, we can't help you no more. Or, um, uh, look, bro, we got you anytime you ask. So these are the things that you have to consider. So... Um, if it were me and I had, there was no plan in place for how to deal with this, then uh, I would call the uh, sergeant at arms. That would be my first phone call. Uh, hey, sergeant, I got a problem. I need some money and I need it now. And then the sergeant at arms um, can go from there. I am okay, people. I guess I won't be doing no more videos in doctor's offices. <laughs> Uh, normal checkup here, just in the normal checkup. Um, but uh, one of the things you can do is, is uh, I, like I say, the first call would be to the sergeant at arms. I've got an emergency. I need some money. Um, and then the sergeant at arms can get the wheels rolling. And that's how it should go up the chain of command that way. The sergeant at arms calls the secretary and calls the, uh, 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 the business manager, if you have one, and calls the... Uh, the, the president, the vice president, and makes all of this stuff kind of happen. And that's all you should have to do is call your sergeant at arms and he gets back to you with a solution. That's the sergeant at arms job. And if you read my book, The Sergeant at Arms Bible, he is the conduit between the regular member and the executive board. He's that bridge that you go through. Uh, but of course, if things are bad, you can't get a hold of the sergeant at arms, and you get a hold of the VP uh, or the secretary of the business manager. Uh, and if you can't get a hold of any of those guys, then you have to get a hold of the P. But the P should be the last person contacted for this. All this should be actually uh, handled and decided and 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 a plan laid out. Uh, so when the VP when the when the VP takes it to the press, it's just something the press has to sign off on because everybody underneath the VP is taken care of it. That's the procedure. That's how this is supposed to work. That's that's the uh, nuts and bolts of the, the 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 way the MC is supposed to operate. It's supposed to operate like a well-oiled machine where uh, people do the jobs of their titles and they move they move shit along, along quick, fast, and in a hurry. So. Um, uh, I wanted to put that out because um, uh, my viewer said it, it was an emergency and he didn't 
quite know how to uh, go about the procedure. So when, when I ask for money to add, you know, to add to this, if you're going to ask for money, you need to borrow money, then you need to come um, with a, um, uh, uh, a plan. So I, when I ask for money, uh, what's up, Mama Ro? When I ask for money, I always um, have a plan for when I'm going to pay it back. Uh, I need to borrow some money and I'll be getting it back to you Tuesday. Or I need to borrow some money and I'll be getting it back to you next Wednesday. Or I need to borrow some money and I don't know when the hell I'm going to get it back to you. Um, and so that way, uh, if if you set that up, nobody can be upset because they know when you're going to bring the money back, uh, what your plan is for paying it back. So whenever you borrow money from the club, always borrow money with a, uh, a sheet of paper and a promissory note that says, hey, I'm borrowing money from the club. This is what I'm going to be using it for. And then this is when I plan to pay it back, if I can pay it back at all. And then the next thing um, you want to do is you always want to... It, it's important to... Although people take you at your word, it's important to, 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 to prove that you did what you said you were going to do with the money. And so if you're going to use the money to, to, to buy motorcycle tires, um, to hit the club back on the chat board with a receipt for the tires and a thank you, everybody knows that you did exactly what you said you were going to do with the tires, and with the money that they gave you. I need the money to get out of jail. You show a receipt for that. The bail bailiff, blah, blah, blah. Everybody can be uh, very happy that you did what you said you would do. What's up uh, there, Netherlands? It's good to see you. Richard Van Ravenhorst. hope I said that right. Um, so um, these are the things I wanted to pass on to you. How to ask for the money. Who to ask for the money. Delivering a plan for uh, how you're going to get the money back. Uh, when you ask for the money, there should be an amount. Uh, I need 650 bucks. I need $6,500, whatever the case may be, whatever your, your club can, can tolerate. And then, you know, uh, excuse me, you always want to promise, promise late and deliver early. So if you promise you're going to have it back on the first of the new month, if you could have it back the 15th of the previous month or or a week or two in advance, early, people feel appreciated when you get them their money back, uh, especially when you get it back before you said you're going to do it. People feel appreciated. They feel like you, yeah, that Black Dragon's a good guy. He only asks for money like when he needs it, and he makes sure to give me my money back. And that's called, that's building a, uh, a line of credit. So these are people you can go back to again if you, if you have to. So uh, just treating your brothers and sisters with, great honor and respect and uh, courtesy while um, they're helping you in your time of need is important. And it's what helps bring the MC along. But uh, by the same token, I also want to, um, what's up, Black Sabbath? Preach, good to have you on, brother. Uh, morning to you. Uh, uh, I see we got uh, Edward Thompson Phillips. Good morning to you. Is it morning somewhere? Where the hell is it morning at? Uh, but good morning to you. Um, Chris Moore, Christy Nicole McCormick. We've got so many great people on. John W. Gribble, Tour Clayton, Anthony Cronover, Scotty Fried, all my top fans. Patrick uh, Shog Shognessy, Scotty Fried, all my cool people that are on with me all the time. Thank you, guys. Frederick, uh, Ramon Monk, all you guys. James Thunder Miller. Dominic Crowder, did I get, uh, hopefully I got a lot of you. Chris Moore Sr. Uh, uh, oh, thank you, Preach. Uh, appreciate that, bro. Um, so, uh, um, the, um, uh, other thing that you can think about is when, when you're uh, borrowing money from the club it's important to use that as a last resort it's important to think about now if you need us you need us 
and this is a family, so come to us. But it's important to think about not trying to be um, uh, a pain in the arse, uh, not trying to be an overburden. Um, because people get tired of that. People uh, have small patience for that. Being at motorcycle clubs costs money, lots of money. It's money to buy these things, ride these things, take these vacations. I remember one year uh, as national president, I spent like $22,000 just going to Black Sabbath events. Um, and, you know, you got 15, 20, 30, 40 chapters 50 chapters, and you're trying to go to everything, you're going to spend some money. The motorcycle club world is a place where you're going to spend some money. You're going to spend some money on those bikes. You're going to spend some money keeping them up. You're going to spend some money towing them when they break down. You're going to spend some money. You're going to spend some money. You're going to spend some money. If you've got one of them Harley Davidsons, you're going to spend $100 every time you look at the damn thing. Ching, ching, $100. Ching, ching, $100. I need to change the oil. Ching, ching, $100. So, uh, that's just what HD stands for, $100. But um, you might have to think about, like, maybe my lifestyle isn't ready for the motorcycle club right now. Maybe um, maybe I need to spend more parts of my life getting my act together before uh, trying to ride and hang out with the brothers, and I, I don't have the... You know, maybe you need to do a little bit more focus on getting your shit totally tight before um, uh, you want to play in the motorcycle club world. Because this is this is a, a hobby. It's a way of life. It's a style of life. But it's also a hobby. I mean, it doesn't come before your family if you're in a 99% traditional motorcycle club world. It's the, it doesn't take the place of family. It doesn't take the place of work. It doesn't take the place of a job. This is something that you do uh, as part of your life, uh, like uh, going to church. Most people go to church. It's a lifestyle, but um, you got to uh, be able to afford it. You know, I often look at people like, man, hey, when you're in a church, I mean, these, these air conditioners and stained glass windows and shit cost money, bro. This shit ain't cheap. It costs you a little bit. We, we're paying for these carpets in here. We got to... Have these floors waxed? We need some new tables and things. This is uh, this costs a little money. Motorcycle clubs are the same way. Much love to Calaveras MC, Texas. Bam Bam, Sinton chapter. Good to see you guys. Thanks for coming on. Sorry I'm late. Black Dragon will catch up on what I missed on the scoot. Ah, uh, you didn't miss much. We're just uh, somebody asked uh, for those of you who just recently tuning in. Somebody asked me. Uh, how do you borrow money from the club in an emergency between club meetings? And if I had a video for that, and I didn't have a video for that, so that's why I'm making this video right now. So you want to uh, approach the club. Uh, like I say, the best person to get in touch with is your sergeant at arms. He can call an emergency meeting together, get the folks on the right folks on the phone. He'll forward this up the chain of command so that it gets the right eyes on it if the club has the num money. They give it to you. Always go to the club with, um, oh, excuse me. Always go to the club with um, um, uh, a proposal for how you're going to give them people their money back and when you're going to give them people their money back. And that's a good thing. That's, that's how you do that. Hope you're okay. I love this world that we live in and I love it so much. Yes, I'm okay. I'm fine. Just here for a normal checkup, uh, hopefully. Uh, what's up, John Snyder? Steel Throttle RC, Winchester, Virginia. It's good to see you, man. Oh, I appreciate the love. I, I hit them back, but I don't have them to talk to you guys. Um, so, any questions for me about this uh, one topic that we have here, how to borrow money uh, in an emergency uh, from the club? And... Um, as a club, you know, you should have an emergency number set up. Somebody that's always... There's so... You know, you got to think of a motorcycle club as a style of life that takes care of its people and everything they need and then everything that they're doing. And if you think of the MC like that, um, you will help form the uh, 
uh, pillars of the MC that take care of, of your members. Do you charge interest? Absolutely not. Uh, we have never charged anyone interest on a loan that I can think of that I have ever seen in the 31 years uh, I've been on the bike set and associated with my club. I've never seen that. Um, I have, however, though, seen asshole members that have loaned the club money charge interest on that, uh, which is kind of funny because they didn't want the club to charge them interest later. But they didn't mind charging the club interest, but you know how people are. Uh, but no, we, we uh, don't charge interest. Uh, in our club, in an emergency, we take care of our own, so there is no borrow with us. So that's another thing. Um, uh, but the club, you know, the club may say there's no borrow with us, or the club may say on certain situations there's no borrowing with us, and on other situations there is. So sometimes we'll just give you the money, and sometimes uh, you got to pay the money back. And um, uh, that, again, is um, however the, your club may operate. Um, do you go by word, or do you write something up? Oh, you absolutely, like I, I said at the beginning of this video, uh, I believe in writing stuff up because people's memories can get short, and that, that's just human nature. In human nature, people just have short memories. Their memories last for as long as the emergency is, and then they get, like, vague. Did I? Uh, I don't remember promising to pay this back. <laughs> yeah, here it is right here in black and white, my bro. Just, you know, love you. Love you, though. Don't think I don't love you. Um, somebody says, we never do a, a payback. We just take care of our people. And that's absolutely... Uh, uh, beautiful. I think that's really amazing. No tolerance for repeat offenders, though, says Chris Moore. Sit down, do some financial counseling with them, and be sure the root of the problem is addressed. Lots of times it's because of mismanagement of money. Uh, isn't that so with all of us? Um, so these are, you know, obviously other clubs have been through this, so these are uh, things that... Um, you guys might want to think about never really know someone till you lend them some money. And okay, so let me let me just say this. My mother used to always tell me never lend more money than you can't afford to lose. So when you give it to a person you're lending it to, just give it to them in your mind as a gift. If they pay you back, then that is gravy. That's icing on the cake. That's a bonus. That's a pleasure. But if you already plan to give that money away and never need it again, then you don't have to fall out with a friend over a few dollars or a few hundred dollars, depending on, or a few thousand or a few hundred thousand or a few million or a few hundred million or a few billion or a few hundred billion, depending on who and you and your friends are. But you never have to, to lose a friendship because um, you... Uh, planned on not getting that money back anyway and i hate to lose a friend over money i hate to lose a club brother over money uh, if i can afford to just chunk it at you i will i uh, guess i don't know why i'm so tired but um i'm just yawning yawning it's just going on here so any other questions for me or comments on this live video Okay, cool. Um, so, you know, that's my two cents. And, uh, yeah, that's my two cents. And, um, uh, I'd love to hear you guys' two cents down in the comments below. How's my weight loss going? Um, man, I lost a lot of weight, and then I started gaining it back. So I'm, you know, starting all over again. Uh, always work to be done that can fulfill a loan. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got some bikes and stuff that need to be washed and some stuff around the clubhouse that needs to be painted. All kinds of stuff. 
that you can do to fill a... <clears throat> Man, what's going on with all this genre? All kinds of stuff that you can do to fulfill uh, a loan balance. All right, listen, we have biker gear at blackdragonsgear.com. And uh, we hope that you go over there and get it. Some get yourself some biker gear. We've got T-shirts and all kinds of things, books. You can find my latest books, Prospects Bible, Prospects Bible for Women's Motorcycle Clubs, Sergeant at Arms Bible, and the uh, Public Relations Officers Bible, all over on Black Dragon Biker, Black BlackDragonsGear.com. Our uh, new site is BikerLiberty.com. BikerLiberty.com is where you can get your latest biker news and videos uh, from me and stories and all kinds of biker news. And we also have uh, affiliate marketing over there. So if you click on any links and you go buy something, that helps the channel. So we definitely appreciate you for that. You can help us out if you want to by giving us a donation at PayPal, which is jbunchii at aol.com. You can also uh, go over to Black Dragon National President over on Patreon and donate to us monthly. Or you can give us something on Cash App, which is dollar sign Biker Prez, uh, and help us that way. Or you can help us. I said PayPal, didn't I? So those are the ways that you can help us, PayPal, Cash App, and Patreon, uh, if you are concerned with, with donating to the channel. We've gotten almost 10,000 subscribers in the last, like, 35 days. We're, like, at 9,900 now. And I really wanted to know if I could get to 10,000. And it took me over a year. It took me about a year and a half to get to 10,000 over on my YouTube channel, Black Dragon Biker TV. So to go to 10,000 followers on this, well, we're, like, 9,900, you know? And uh, we're hoping to go over 10,000 today. So to be able to just go over 10,000 like that in just a few days when it took almost a year and a half before is amazing. And it's a testament that our message is getting out to you folks and reaching you. And we thank you so much. Uh, do you ship to Scotland? Absolutely. We do ship to Scotland. Scotland. Um, beautiful place you have there. I was in Holy Lock and got to see a lot of Scotland when I was there. A very beautiful place. Okay, so man, I'm gonna try to take a nap until the doctor gets here. So let's see. Um uh uh The Dragon's Layer Motorcycle Chaos is our podcast. The Dragon's Layer Motorcycle Chaos is where we would like for you to go and check us out on your our podcast and let us know how we're doing. Uh, I'll help you out. Get ready to hit 10,000. Oh, well, thanks, man. Appreciate it. We are like, we're like at like 9,900 or something like that uh, at this point. We're just so close to the 10,000 mark. It's really crazy. Uh, to do that in 35 days, maybe thir between 35 and 40 days to me is absolutely amazing. And we're just so thankful to you guys. And, um, our posts touched 284,000 people just uh, in the last three days alone. So we are doing amazing. And you guys are really helping us out over here at Black Dragon Biker TV. So anyway, uh, that's my two cents. Please leave your two cents in the comment section below. Thanks for tuning in. Check out all our stuff. And... Get skinny. M was what I call my everything or so I thought, cause my was the beginning of everything that turned into selfishness. Like seconds I was on a B, I wanted so bad to be something amazing to someone I ended up being his second B. Was a point where I missed E, but literally, emotionally, I was on E. When I was with S, everything came in multiple sets. Infidelity led me to regret. Ended up with C and I literally seen how everybody has another side to them no one has ever seen. Tried it out with V, thought he could fill the void. Gave A a chance and got left in debt. Cause I was trying to regain my heart from the beginning, but now there's nothing left. When I got to J, he reminded me of everything in just. So at that point I had no trust. And M B E S C A J makes no fucking sense. That's why I don't trust these yeah. men. A millest ways of society, trying to be a prodigy. Remember me, not an honorary. 
that's far from me Your ears are to blame for the way I'm conveyed But hey, it wasn't me Situation is pedigree Everything or so I thought cuz my was the beginning of everything that turned into selfishness no. Like seconds. I was on a B. I wanted so bad to be something amazing to someone I ended up being his second B. Was a point where I missed E, but literally emotionally I was on E When I was with S everything came in multiple sets infidelity led me to regret Ended up with C and I literally seen how everybody has another side to them. No one has ever seen Tried it out with V thought he could fill the void gave A a chance and got left in debt cuz I was trying nothing left when i got to j he reminded me of everything in just so at that point i had no trust and m-b-e-s-c-a-j makes no fucking sense that's why i don't trust these men i'm really sways of society trying to be a prodigy remember me not an honorary that's far from me your ears are to blame for the way i'm conveyed but hey it wasn't me situation is pedigree metaphors and energies books got you living on a dream it's all a scheme tell you how they didn't tell me fantasies could be a nightmare that kills softly for that my dear your life can end costly pray they never buy your heart out sell your card out don't ever want to catch you shooting up they're behind bars now because we all know 12 never had our guards out i can never be a setback push that for real you know that i meant that everything you lack so you already know So it's true in this game for you Cause you know what I do in this game for you So it's true, so it's true in this game for you So it's true, so it's true in this game for you Cause you know what I do in this game for you So it's true, so it's true in this game for you I stood ten toes down and they asking why I'm single now Throw my hand out but still don't wanna mingle now Got them throwing shade but what's the sun without hate Assuming that I don't like you, that's a personal thing I see true perception right through all those fake impressions I'm the type to get straight to addressing I don't waste the time on anything that ain't mine And how I see it, people gon' do what they do When your back's turned, smile in your face and act like they back Trying to crash your lane I say this, everything's up to questioning One I learned, got burned Many of my own confessions I never let a whole possession So it's true, so it's true In this game for you Cause you know what I do In this game for you So it's true, so it's true In this game for you so it's true, so it's true in this game for you Cause you know what I do in this game for you So it's true, so it's true in this game for you Ooh.